If all the solid pieces in the problem are sitting still, then nothing's doing any work on the fluid and we can apply Bernoulli's equation. The energy will stay constant. However, if the solid elements in the problem are moving, then we wind up with an energy transfer between the solid and the fluid and the result is we can no longer apply Bernoulli's equation. So we'd like to get back to a position where we can apply Bernoulli's equation. It's important to note that kinetic energy really depends on the frame of reference. If you're in a stationary frame of reference and this train car is moving at 20 meters per second, everything on that train car has a whole lot of kinetic energy associated with that velocity. Me, the wall, the train car, the wheels of the train car, they have even more energy because of the rotation. However, if we take a frame of reference and attach it to the train car, so that it moves along with the train car at 20 meters per second, then nothing in that frame of reference has any kinetic energy. So kinetic energy really depends on the frame of reference we choose. And the choice is arbitrary, so we can make whatever we want. Now think about me leaning on the wall inside this train car. If I'm in a frame of reference where I'm moving along with the train car, and I am if I'm standing inside it, then there's no work done on my hand by the wall, no work done on the wall by my hand. We're just leaning there and there's an offsetting force here on my feet to balance out the F equals MA. On the other hand, if we were in a frame of reference sitting on the platform and tried to calculate the work done, then we'd have a whole lot of work being done by the wall on my hand pushing this way and a whole lot of work done by my feet on the floor also pushing this way. That would make our lives complicated and that's why if we're trying to figure out what's going on inside the train car, we always choose a control volume that moves at the same speed as the train car. Our frame of reference moves at the same speed as the train car. And then we see there's no work being done and that's what we actually experience. So pick a frame of reference that works out and gives us the right answer. If that force was 50 newtons, the power would be the force times the velocity, that's force times distance per unit time, or a thousand watts if it was a 50 newton force at 20 meters per second. So from the train, the power is zero. So back to our momentum type problems. Let's work in a frame where no work is actually done. If I've got this block here with the fluid coming in and turning around, it comes in at 10 meters per second. There's some work done because the block's moving at 4 meters per second. This fluid is pushing on the block and doing work. The result is, came in with a high kinetic energy, it'll go out with a much lower kinetic energy. How much lower? We don't know yet. Because work is done, we can't apply Bernoulli's equation. Put it in a control volume that moves with the block. The block is now stationary. It's moving at 4 meters per second. There's some force applied. The block is sitting still. The fluid is approaching the block at 6 meters per second. The jet out here in the stationary control volume was moving at 10 meters per second, but the control volume here is moving away from it at 4 meters per second. So the difference is 6 meters per second. Once we're inside this moving control volume, Bernoulli's equation does apply. And so no pressure change and no elevation change means that the velocity coming out will be the same as the velocity going in. V squared over 2g will be a constant. No work is done. Now we can figure out what that force is by the techniques we've already applied. And once we know what that force is, we can go back over here and find out what it looks like if we're standing still beside the blade and it's moving at 4 meters per second. We'll see two things. We'll see the same force here and here. And we'll see the same fluid motion here and here, because our change in frame of reference doesn't change what happens physically. What we'll see, though, is this stuff that's going 6 meters per second that way, in a frame of reference that's going 4 meters per second that way, is only going 2 meters per second coming out of here. 2, 6, minus that 4, gives us a net vector in this other frame of reference of two meters per second that way. So let's apply this idea to the same problem we had before except let's have a moving block. 
<clears throat> if we have a blade like this that's changing the direction of the water and the blades in motion then we can't simply apply Bernoulli's equation between here and here because there is a net energy transfer and we don't know how big it is so we may know the incoming jet velocity but we don't know the outgoing jet velocity in order to be able to apply Bernoulli's equation we have to make sure that the blades doing no work on the flow if the blade is stationary it does no work on the flow so let's put the blade in a control volume frame of reference where the frame of reference is moving at the same velocity as the blade so that the blade is stationary. Kinetic energy changes with the frame of reference and we can set the frame of reference to anything we want so let's make it easy to do our calculation. Jet's moving this way at VB or sorry the jet is moving this way at VJ the blade is moving this way at VB and this is in a fixed frame of reference fixed to the ground or our observation location. Let's instead choose a frame of reference that moves with the blade and then the blade will be stationary. So here's what we see inside our frame of reference with the blade stationary. The velocity coming in here is the jet velocity minus the blade velocity because the frame of reference is now moving this way at the blade velocity so that the jet is only catching up by the difference between the jet velocity and the blade velocity. So if the blade was traveling at the same speed as the jet then the water would be approaching the blade at a relative velocity of zero. That would be V jet minus V blade. So it comes in here at V jet minus V blade. We apply Bernoulli's equation because there is no change in energy in the fluid. There's no work done on the fluid by the blade or work done on the blade by the fluid and the result is V2 will be equal to V1 neglecting gravity and there will be no pressure difference so V2 is also V jet minus V blade neglecting friction and neglecting gravity The sum of the forces applied in the x-direction must result in accelerating the fluid between where it comes in and where it goes out. So the difference between the momentum it came out with and the momentum it came in with is the uh, result of the applied forces. So mass flow, mass flow, both the same by continuity. M dot U out, that's V2 times M dot but it's V2 component only in the X direction so there's going to be something involved with theta there. M dot U in, V in is all in the X direction and the M dot is the same. So we can take M dot outside and look at these ones. M dot will be rho V jet minus VB that's the relative velocity here times the cross-sectional area when it comes in. Now if we take a picture in either the moving control volume or the stationary control volume, we'll still see the same cross-sectional area of that jet. It'll be whatever the value is here that we see, the area of the jet. So the mass flow, density, times that velocity in our frame of reference where we're working, times the area of the jet. Then inside the brackets, U out, V2 times cos theta, that's V jet minus VB times cos theta, minus U in, which is V1, that's VJ minus VB. Put that all together, we wind up with rho times the area of the jet times VJ minus VB squared times cosine theta minus 1. We do the same thing for the forces in the y direction. M dot V out minus M dot V in gives us the y direction forces exactly the same as when we were doing the stationary blade. And again we wind up with sine theta this time instead of cosine theta. 
zero coming in, and this is the result, rho, a jet, v jet minus vb squared times sine theta.